sleeping. It is a time of prayer. It is a time to hear the word of God. We have come this morning. Our message this morning, please, because of my time, we are going to take this message fast. I want you to pay attention to this message this morning. Let there be no distraction. Please read, open your Bible. If uh, you are there on Skype, uh, Skype and you want to read Bible, please, you're supposed to come on Zoom so that uh, you can you can read Bible. It's not meant that uh, one person will just be reading Bible while other people are there. Please, come on Zoom. If you if come on Zoom, if you are there. Our topic this morning, God, God made Jesus to become sin because of you. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Do you understand the meaning of the topic? God made Jesus to become sin because of you. Do you believe that? Do you believe that? Yes, sir. Eh? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. God, he made Jesus a somebody, an innocent person. He made him to become sin. And because of you. And uh, a preacher will tell you, a preacher will tell you right now, whether you live in sin, you practice boyfriend or girlfriend in the church, it's no longer in sin. And uh, you will go to heaven. Whose heaven are you going? Eh? Whose heaven are you going? When the king of kings, a king, the, 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 the creator of the universe, and uh, our father make him to become sin. Why? To redeem you and I. And somebody will not tell you that uh, it doesn't matter how you live. You are in the state of grace and that uh, you will believe. Is that not so? Huh? But is that not so? Yes, sir. They will tell you that uh, you are in the state of grace. You are free to live. You are free to live your life. This is a modern world. <laughs> Praise the Lord. You see, these are blind people. These are blind preachers. They will tell you it is a modern world. A modern world. And when the pastor see money now, what happened? His mouth will turn. A pastor will not preach against sin. And such pastors will pay for his life. <laughs> Brethren, this morning. Yeah, yesterday when I was uh, when I was going through this message, when I was uh, going through the message, I was about to cry in the sense that uh, seeing what Christ have done for us, how Christ carrying our sin and put upon His head, brethren, how Christ carrying His own sin, carry our sin and put upon His head. I was about to shed tears. But let us go this morning. Let us see our Bible in the book of uh, Second Corinthians 5, verse 21. Please, without wasting time. Second Corinthians 5, verse 21. Who is there? Praise God. Hallelujah. Verse 21. For he had made him to be seen for us, who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. Praise the Lord. Are you seeing it now? You know that uh, since over three days now, God has been, God has been de dealing with us, showing us his mind, if you look at it, where we have been taking our 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 desk, and uh, it is a very short place. Am I right? And uh, yes. each, each somebody somebody we somebody we somebody we imagine. Say, why is it that why is it that this time now this message is coming like this? Is that not true? Somebody may have that in mind. Why this message is coming this way today? One vice is another 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 topic. Tomorrow another one because. God has a special message for us for we to understand. Maybe you have been reading this place, you have been reading it and reading it, but you have not come to you have not come to this awareness of knowing this mind of Christ. That you should be grateful to God. You connected this morning to this program. Look at it. He said, For him, made him, he made he made him 
to become what? To become sin for us. Who knew no sin that we may be made in the righteousness of, of God in Him. Through Jesus Christ, that you and I may come to repent and have the put on the new garment, put on the righteousness of God. That you and I, through you, uh, uh, through Christ Jesus Christ, who carry our sin, because when Adam sinned, and uh, we were separated away from God, and what happened? Christ, God was looking for somebody who will come and redeem us as a, uh, uh, as a offer. God offered Jesus Christ. Just, you know how they, you know how to slaughter, how to slaughter goat, am I right? And? Eh? Brethren, you know how to slaughter goat now. Yes, yes sir. You went to market and buy innocent goat, innocent sheep, innocent fowl. Now, no, nothing. You use it to make sacrifice. So you cut his neck. Brethren, there are many of you that cannot that cannot kill fowl. Is that not true? You are afraid. But this is how this is how the, this is how Jesus Christ was carried for your own sin. And what happened? It was it, 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 his neck was cut. And the blood go for your for your own sin. I want you to first of all imagine that. I want to pay attention to that. I want you to begin to imagine the type of uh, the type of sacrifice that Christ has sacrificed for you to redeem you. Yesterday we were talking about redeem, how Christ redeemed us, but today we are not looking into the message. God made God made Jesus to become sin because of you. So that you will have life. So that you will have the eternal, eternal life. But many of us are making caricature with it. Many of us, many of us have not come to the awareness of living in Christ. Many of us have not come to understand what Christ has done for us. But this morning, I bless Jesus Christ who gave us this privilege for us to see, for us to know his mind. Let us see, we, let us see the Bible in the book of uh, Isaiah. Let's see in the book of uh, Isaiah 53, verse 5. Are we there? Yes, sir. Go ahead. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. But are you seeing? Are you seeing what happened here? Let's read. Let Let us read ten. Ten. Verse ten. Yes, it pleased the Lord to bruise him. He has put him to grief. When thou shalt make his soul an offer, an offering for sin, he shall see his seed, he shall prolong his days, and the pleasure of the Lord shall prosper in his hand. Are you seeing what happened here? Are you seeing that how he preserved the law? He preserved the law to sacrifice his only son. Brethren, can it present you? Can you be happy? You see somebody give your daughter or give your son two slap and you are standing. Eh? Is there any woman here or any father that can be that, that can be happy? Eh? But, but you see what happened here? He pleaded the Lord to sacrifice his only son as an offering of a sin. As offering. From my sin for your sin. But then why are we why are we why are we crucifying the Lord again? Why are we the Christians? Why are we rejecting this offer that Christ has offered for us? Why are we re rejecting this life that Christ has given unto us? Why are we mocking the name of the Lord? But then, you may surprise, you may say, how am I mocking the name of the Lord? Do you know that you are mocking the name of the Lord when you, when you are not doing right? You do you know that you are mocking the name of the Lord when you are not living the holy life? You are mocking Jesus Christ. 
you know that you are mocking that name you are saying that the, the what jesus christ have done for you it is not enough but you are still waiting for another messiah but you are just a pretender you are waiting for another messiah that will come and then such a person will go and end up in hell when you have the opportunity somebody 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 only only be God's son he prevented his father to do what to sacrifice him as offer offering of sin for your sin for my sin praise the lord hallelujah praise the lord hallelujah brethren we are going to run into this message this morning so that uh, we will not uh, uh, miss any verse let's see in the book of galatians 3 galatians 3 verse uh, galatians 3 verse 13 let's read here galatians 3 verse 13 who is there Galatians 3 13 says, Christ hath relieved us from the cause of the law, being made a cause for us, for it is written, Cursed is every one that hangeth on a tree. Are you seeing it now? Christ has redeemed us from the cause of the law, being made a cause for us, for it is written. Are you seeing it now? For it is written. Cause is everyone that hang that hang on the on the on the tree on the tree. But then you see how Christ how Christ went to the cross to do what to pay for your sin. He carried your cause. He carried your sin and put it on the shoulder. But then, do you understand what Christ has done for you? But then, you that is not paying attention to Christ, you that are so full of busy. You that don't have time to understand what Christ is saying, what Christ has done for you. Thank God for Jesus Christ who make you to be a part of this family. I want you to examine yourself. I want you to look into your life. What Christ has done, this Christ has carried your sin. But he said, go and go and sin no more. He has forgiven you your sin. But by the moment you are still dwelling in sin, you are telling Christ, you are telling Jesus, no, this thing is not like this. Let us go to the book of uh, in the book of uh, First Peter. First Peter. First Peter two twenty-two. First Peter two twenty-two. Who is there? Who did who did not say neither was God found in his mouth? But are you seeing that uh, First Peter two twenty two? Who are you seeing what happened there? Who did not see? He did not know anything. He did not know anything. None that was anything at all. Any any mistake, anything come out of his mouth. No, nothing, nothing was found. No accusation. But have you seen when they even when they brought him to palace? What happened? They said this man, they don't see any accusation they lay against him. There was no any accusation. But have you ever seen a man, a somebody, innocent person, that didn't know anything, they would just go and kill him? Innocent person. He died for you and I. But then, are you, are, are you going to allow this death to be in vain? I want you to think about your life. I want you to think about that. I want you to look into your life. I want you to meditate about your life. I want you to meditate. Brethren, are you going to allow the death of Christ to be in vain? First Peter 3, 3, 5. Are you, are you going to allow? No, First John. First John 3, 5. First John 3, 5. And ye know that he was manifested to take away our sins and in him is no sin are you seeing it now and ye know that he was manifest to take away our sin to take away the sin of the whole world and and in him no sin but any child 
that is committing sin, that is committing adultery, that is committing fornication, that child is not a child of God. Do you believe me? Yes, sir. Do you believe me? But today, I don't know many of us claiming we are Christians, but we are still living in sin. I don't know many of us claiming today we are Christian, but we are still lying. We are still deceiving one another. We are still committing fornication. We are still committing idolatry in one way or another. We are still doing all sorts of rubbish of business to make money. But we are claiming we are Christian. We come to church to shout and shout and shout and shout. We are expecting multi to fall. But when you when you are in church, the person behaves like angel, angel of light. But when the person leaves the church, the person is the angel of Satan. Is that a Christian? Who are you deceiving? Who are you deceiving? Baby, are you deceiving me? Eh? Are you deceiving mm. me? You are not deceiving anybody, but you are deceiving yourself. I want you to, I want you to examine yourself this morning as a message comes forth. Look into your life. Are you really a child of God? Are you really a child of God? Are you really a child of God? It is a something you need to think about your life. Let's see in the book of Romans, Romans 3. Romans 3. Look into your life this morning. Examine yourself. Are you really a child of God? Am I really a child of God? Am I really a child of God? Romans 3. Are we there? 24 yes. to 25. Being justified freely by his grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. Are you seeing it now? Being justified freely by his grace through the redemption of the of, of that in Christ in Christ Jesus. Through the redemption. Brethren, be justified freely. It is a freely, it is a free gift. It is a, a, a free gift. Let's go for that. Whom God has set forth to be a provocation through faith in his blood to declare his righteousness for the remission of sins that are passed through the forbearance of God. But are you, are you seeing what happened there? Are you seeing how Christ redeemed us? But then, this morning, Christ has given us the grace, the grace to live above sin, the grace to live a righteous life. Do not allow what Christ has done to be in vain. Because if you allow it to be in vain in your life, you will regret. Maybe today you are doing one or two things. The pastor, your pastor knows what you are doing. The pastor cannot advise you, cannot tell you what you are doing is sin. What you are doing is evil. What you are doing is contradict the gospel of Christ. And the pastor, because you are bringing money to the pastor, the pastor begins to happy. But I tell you the truth, such a person, you and that pastor, we go and end up in hell. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Let us go back to the book of uh, uh, Isaiah 53. Let's read from verse 6 to 9. Isaiah 53. Yes. Are we there? Oh, yes, sir. Go ahead, please. Oh, we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way. And the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. Are, are you saying it now? Oh, oh, we. Oh, we, like a sheep, has gone, gone astray. We was, we gone astray. But then do you know that? All of us, we gone astray. Why? Because of uh, the sin of the world. But what happened? Jesus Christ came to this world to redeem us, to return us back to, to heaven. It's through the Christ Jesus Christ that all of us have the access of going to heaven. But then you see how that the iniquity of the world was put upon his bed. Brother, have you seen it? He carried the iniquity of my life. He carried the iniquity of your life. Just like some time ago, I was 
some time ago I became an instrument to the devil. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Some time ago that I came to realize that I'm in trouble. But maybe this is this morning it is your own time for you to realize that uh, you are in trouble, for you to amend your way so that you will have life. Let's go for that so that we will see it seven. Go ahead, you that is ready, please. Oppressed, and he was afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth. He is brought as a lamb, slaughter, and as a sheep before her shearers is dumb. So he opened not his mouth. Brother, are you seeing the humility of Christ upon all the things they have done to him? Jesus Christ did not open mouth to speak evil. Jesus Christ did not open mouth to offend anybody. They could not play accusation on him. They could not find him guilty because why? He is the king of kings. He came to, fulfill, to, to redeem us, to fulfill the word of God, to redeem us, to return us back to heaven, but then to redeem us for all our iniquity. But if you allow this death to be in vain, if you say because of the things of this world, you follow the things of this world, and I tell you the truth, you did not happen unto this world, I tell you such a person will go and end up in hell. But the hell is free, heaven is free, you are the one to determine, because I am not the one that forced you to come to Europe, I am not the one that forced you to the land where you are, I am not the one that forced you to the city where you are, but then the same way that uh, I am giving you this message this morning, but I am not the one to force you. I give you the word of God, but I am not the one to force you to run for your head, to run for, for, for her. Because her is awaiting for anybody, any man, whether big or small. When you are living in sin, when you did not accept Christ, Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, such a person, no matter how the caliber of the person, no matter how the timber, no matter how rich or how poor of that person, that person will go and end up in hell. I tell you the truth of it. No, you will not escape her. The only way you can escape her is only you repent this morning. If you only you repent, I tell you, if you refuse to repent, you will not perish in her. This is the truth of the gospel. This is the truth of the gospel. You must examine yourself this morning to know who you are. Let's read the let's, let's read. Let's read down so that uh, we will conclude the message. He was taken from prison and from judgment, and who shall declare his generation? For he was cut off out of the land of the living, for the transgressions of my people was he, was he stricken. Go ahead. And, and he met his grave with the wicked and with the rich in his death, because he had done no violence, neither was any deceit in his mouth. Praise the Lord. Brethren, this is the final conclusion of the whole matter. The final conclusion that you and I should turn away from the wicked way. That you and I should not allow the riches of this world to separate us away from this love of Christ. That you and I should not allow the beauty things of this world to separate us away from this, from what Christ has done for us. But then, any husband or wife or single brother, single sister that are listening to this message, wherever where you are, but I may not know you, but Christ know you. I may not know you. I may not see you face to face or till we die. But Christ has sent me, I, Evangelist Bartholomew, this morning, to warn you that you should not you should not return to the world. That you should, you should be, you should separate yourself away from sin because the deadline has come. There is a deadline. We discussed a message of deadline few, a few time ago. This morning we are now deliberating of the issue. God made Jesus to become sin because of you, but then because of you. But if you allow this what Christ has done to become in vain, if you live in sin, I tell you the truth, such a person will regret the day that he or she was born. But 
we should not be those people that hear the word of God. After hearing the word of God, let them, they don't practice what they hear. As you hear the word of God this morning, let this word of God not be a judgment to you. But then take this message and begin to examine yourself. Who are you? Are you really a child of God? Because everybody that sees both pastor and all, that person is a child of the devil. Because devil sinned in the beginning. I want you to look into your life and begin to talk to God this morning. Brethren, I want you to look into your life. Without holiness, no man shall see the Lord. Because why that? Why is it that Christ came to this world to die for your sin? Christ came to die so that you will have the righteousness of God in you. So that because without the righteousness of God, you cannot go to heaven because the people that the people that live in heaven, they are holy people, they are righteous people. That for you to be righteous, for you to become, for you to become holy, that that is the reason why Christ made this sacrifice. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. But then this is the reason why of this sacrifice. I want you to think about your life. Think about your life. Are you still saying that the trouser? Are you still arguing that trouser? All those worldly things they are not seen. I want to let you know you are making a mistake. I told you last time, I said, go and pray. Go and pray. But this morning, begin to talk to God. I've concluded this message. Begin to talk to God this morning. God made Jesus to become seen because of me. Because of me, I, Evangelist Bartholomew. Wait, should I be a fool? Should I allow that Satan to deceive me? We tell me it doesn't matter that Christ will show me mercy, but then there is no mercy on that day. Without holiness, no man, no woman will see the Lord. But how holy are you as a as a somebody who goes to church? How holy are you as usher, as a choir mistress, a choir master, a member of the usher, a woman leader? How holy are you? Dicky, how holy are you? How righteous are you? Are you not doing competition with the, with the people of the world? The Christians are not doing that. Eternal Father, we are grateful unto you this wonderful morning. Wonderful morning you gave to us. We are grateful unto you. Daddy, I am grateful. Who am I, my father, to hear your word? To hear this word? How will you die for my sin to redeem me? Eternal Father, help me that this message will not bear judgment against me on the last day. Help me, Lord, that I may not preach, that after preach, that I may not be a castaway. Holy Ghost, Father, Eternal Redeemer, help me. Help me to make amendments. Help me to look into my inward, to look into my wardrobe, to look into my life. Lord, to see those things that I need to know. Lord, open my eyes. To see those things, my father in God, I need to see. To know all those things, all those little, little things, those little, little error in me. Lord, my father, do not allow those little, little error to take me to hell. When people are sleeping, when people are enjoying, I said, Lord, I took my time, my father, to be in such a program like this. Lord, my father, help me, my father, that all these times will not be a wasted time to me. Blessed father. Blessed father. Lord, I need that grace. The grace to live a whole life. The grace to live a holy life. Lord, I pray for the entire member of this family. Lord, I pray for those that are there that will listen to this message in one way in another. Lord, I pray that no one of us will go to hell. Lord, remove those, my father. Lord, those evil character, those attitudes, those anger in us. Lord, we have seen, my father, how Christ go. Lord, of all the things that they have done to him, Lord, he didn't open his mouth to speak one day. Lord, help us. Lord, help us. You see our mouth. See our mouth, Lord. This mouth, Lord, you want to take us to hell. Lord, see this mouth, Lord, that we may not talk. Lord, see this mouth. The way Jesus Christ, his mouth was closed. Lord, let our mouth be seen this morning. So that at the end, Lord, this mouth will not take us to hell. Then, Father, help us, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you for how you speak to us. Thank you for this message. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Let your name be glorified. For in Jesus' name we pray.